Praise be Jesus Christ. The long anticipated McCarrick report has finally been released. No, I haven't read it yet. It's hundreds of pages. I've been asking the Lord, Lord, can I go ahead and read this? And the thing is, is I've just started to reread the great biography on St. John Vianney, the Curie of ours. I read this biography as a teenager and it changed my life. I love this great holy priest. I'm also studying some scriptures, so I do want to read the report. I just don't know how soon I'll be able to get around to it. For those of you who aren't familiar with the whole McCarrick situation, um, McCarrick was a cardinal who abused young priests, seminarians, and boys. And in Bishop um, Barron's little booklet, Letter to a Suffering Church, he gives an executive summary. He writes, It seems numerous bishops, archbishops, and cardinals, both in this country and in the Vatican, knew all about McCarrick's outrageous behavior and did nothing in response to it. Or rather worse, they continued to advance him up the ecclesiastical ladder from auxiliary bishop to bishop of a diocese, to archbishop, and finally to cardinal. Even after he resigned from his post in Washington, D.C., McCarrick continued to be a roving ambassador for the church and a kingmaker in the American hierarchy. Again, while everyone knew about his disturbing and abusive tendencies, the average Catholic in America could certainly be forgiven for thinking that something like a conspiracy of silence and a deep corruption obtained within the institutional life of the church. Now, I want to give you an analogy. Pretend you have an airline. Let's call it Ecclesia Airlines. And they have direct flights to the eternal city. And everyone wants to get to the eternal city. The problem is, is sometimes the plane crashes shortly after takeoff and people die. And people begin to be afraid. They want to get to the eternal city, but they see people getting on Ecclesia airline planes and dying. And people don't want to fly Ecclesia airlines anymore. Bishop Barron writes, 30% of Catholics are seriously considering leaving the church. Listen, if an airline mechanic issues a, a safety warning saying, hey, this plane is not safe to fly, who cares about having a delay in a flight? You ground that plane until you figure out, is it safe to fly? It's imperative that we investigate why have these things happened? And this is only one of a number of monumental plane crashes the Catholic Church has seen in the last couple of decades. Listen, I love the church. I've given my life for the church. I don't think I'm angry just as an angry person, but yes, there's a, I think, a righteous anger that flows out of a zeal for the house of God that is insistent. We need to know why do these things happen? And we need to insist this type of thing, it can't happen. Now, there's a difference. If, if a person in, out of weakness falls and gets into trouble, that's, that, that's life, that, that's reality, that's unfortunate. But when there is knowledge of this and it's seemingly covered up and it happens over and over again, it has to stop. It has to stop. This McCarrick report is, is important. And, and I, I want to say a thank you for especially lay Catholics who are doing the work of reading the report and, and, and speaking about the need for the church to be purified. Let's not condemn these people. Let's thank them because they love the church too. In Matthew 18, Jesus says, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of things that cause sin. Such th things must come, but woe to the one through whom they come. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. 
It is better for you to enter into life maimed or crippled than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into eternal fire. Viva Cristore.